Hello, I'm Becca King-Reed. You know, as the Bay Area homeowners struggle to stay afloat in a rough economy, KTEH is working to connect them with the help they need. Many victims of the foreclosure crisis are also victims of predatory lenders who targeted vulnerable homeowners and sold them loans they really couldn't afford or maybe didn't understand. With me is Mava Elise Brown, the Executive Director of Housing and Economic Rights Advocates. Now tell us, what exactly is a predatory loan? How do you know you have one? You know, it's, it's, you, you know it when you have it. It's one of those <laughs> things, unfortunately. But, but some of the signs of a predatory loan include if you feel as if you were lied to in the transaction. A lot of people were, were uh, offered one thing, and then after the transaction was completed, they got their first mortgage payment statement and found that the amount they were paying was very different, or that in some cases maybe they were in a negatively amortizing loan when they thought they were going to get a fixed rate mortgage. Um, just a few, just a few indicators. Now, who's offering these loans? How do they find people? You know, people have been marketed to, the public has been marketed to very heavily by uh, brokers, sometimes directly by lenders, but the broker system has been used extensively and it is possible. There's so much of our information we think of as private that has actually become, that's for sale. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, that's how, part of how we get marketed to in ways that feel very specific to us and we can feel as if we're targeted. Sometimes the marketing also includes uh, reaching out to people at church in places where people feel safe and, uh, and uh, the marketer will create a, f a false sense of, of, of uh, community or commonality with the, the homeowner. What kinds of gimmicks do these guys use to make you think that they're legitimate? Well, you know, they will uh, tell you what you want to hear, first of all. So they will always focus you on paying less every month instead of what it's going to cost you overall. They will tell you well, don't worry if this loan seems a little large right now or a little expensive. We can always refinance you in six months. They also will, will build on a, again, this false sense of community or trust. Uh, so uh, Latinos will get approached by Latinos. Spanish speakers will get approached by Spanish speakers. Black people will be approached by black people. Honestly, when you see somebody from what you might perceive as your own group approaching you, you should be extra suspicious <laughs> because it's it's um, it's it's, it's counterintuitive. It's counterintuitive, but uh, that's part of how awesome. people get to you. How do these loans take advantage of borrowers? Can we talk about some like the equity stripping and the bait yes. and switch kind of things? Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, we, we talked initially about bait and switch, where you're offered one deal that sounds great, you get to the closing table and it turns out that the loan terms are very different from what you thought. Or you don't find out until after you've signed on the dotted, dotted line that the loan terms are worse than what you were offered. That's a common problem. People are, are, are smart enough to go in thinking, I want a fixed rate loan, and but can still end up walking away with an adjustable rate mortgage or something that's only fixed for a month or a couple of months. There are also loans that are equity stripping, negatively amortizing loans, uh, sometimes called pick-a-pay loans or option arms, where you get a choice about how much to pay each month, and your mortgage payment statement is your first clue that you're in trouble, because you'll, it will give you three or four payment choices. A choice sounds good, right? Like mm. you're getting something good. But if you make the smallest payment, you're not even paying all of the interest that has, has become due that month. And the interest doesn't disappear. It gets rolled onto the back end of your loan you principal. And you pay interest on the interest yes. then in the end? Oh my gosh. Yes. So a whole lot of people are losing their, their homes because of those kinds of loans as well. So it's like a credit card. You have to pay more than the minimum or you'll never ever pay that thing off. Absolutely. You'll never make any progress. One, wow. of, the, one of the challenges is people were qualified, were never really qualified to have that much that size of a loan. They could only afford the minimum payment. Now what what should you ask? Are there a few questions that you should definitely ask that would kind of tip you off that this is not such a good loan? Absolutely. There are two documents that you should ask to see. You should ask to see your truth in lending statement. It's a statement, a one-page document that will tell you what your interest rate is, what your annual percentage rate is, and the size of your loan, and how much your monthly payments are going to be. The other document that you absolutely must ask for is called your HUD-1, or your final closing statement, that will show where the money went in the transaction, who got charged, who, who you're paying fees to, um, how much those fees are, 
and you want you must insist on getting that those documents before you uh, do the final signing. Thank you so much, Mava Elise Brown of the Housing and Economic Rights Advocates. For more information and links to organizations that can help you, please go to our website at kteh.org.